Brian, welcome to the Protectors. What's going on, brother? Not a whole lot, man. Uh, I appreciate I appreciate you having me on the show, Jason. I'm, I'm a big I'm a big fan. Uh, you produce a phenomenal show, so it's a, it's an honor. Thank you. No, it's an honor to have you on, man. I, one thing I love is I like good timepieces. I love watches. I like everything about that. I love supporting the community, and this is something new for me, man. I mean, I mean, granted, every Navy SEAL's written a book. But how many of them made watches? Huh? Come on, how many? <laughs> well, you know, there's a, there's another Navy SEAL watchmaker out there, and he actually was my mentor and helped me get started. Um, so I'm only aware of two: me, me, and this other individual. You know what? That's not bad though, because you got to figure. Post 9/11, the SEAL community has gotten so big that two watchmakers, perfect man. There's at least a hundred books. Two two watchmakers is perfect, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Why the Navy SEALs? Why not the Army, Green Berets, Marine Recon? Uh, how how did your uh, where'd your military expertise come from? Uh, it's a good question. So I was 29, 28, 29 when I joined the military. So I had a career in commercial real estate, and I was just failing to launch, failing to th thrive in that environment. And I'd always you know, back in college, I was having a tough time adjusting. And my mom said, you know, you need to start exercising. So I started exercising. And through that process, I came across Navy SEAL workouts. And then I just became obsessed about Navy SEALs. And it took me to 20, the age of 28, 29 to actually, like, it was it. Like, you go now or you don't go. And so I joined. Uh, going through the program and looking back, I could have just as easily joined the Rangers or, you know, Green Berets or any other uh, MARSOC or what have you not. I could have easily done that. I just didn't know any better. I just came across Navy SEALs and then obsessed about it. Uh, you kind of said, you know, there's a lot of books about Navy SEALs. So that might be that might have influenced me <laughs> along the way. I, I can imagine, man, because like, you know, growing up myself, like in the 90s and 80s, we didn't have like access. The only thing out there was like, you know, the, the Rambo movies and and everything was Army, Army, Army. You had Charlie Sheen was about the only Navy yeah. SEAL movie out there. Yeah. You know, Chuck Norris, MIA and all that. There was really no, no real information. All yeah. the books out there at the time were like. I think there was like the men of green faces was probably about the only seal type stuff but everything was like army long range recon from vietnam but yeah man i can imagine like having so much access to information now has been really great for recruiting it's been good and it's been bad i, I joke that i probably would have been happier in the army because i'm not i don't really like i don't hate the water but i'm not it's not my thing like i only get in the ocean because you're telling me to get in the ocean i'm not going there for fun <laughs> 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 but yeah it, it's been it's been great for recruitment i got out of active duty in 2018 and my last stint was an instructor at buds which is our selection course and through that process i got to kind of see behind the curtain and it's interesting because what nsw is dealing with right now is there are books out there and there are people out there talking about you know their experience but those people that are writing the books and talking about the experience aren't necessarily the people that the Navy wants promoting the Navy SEALs. So the SEAL community, you know, back in 2008, and I, I would imagine to a certain extent now, had a real issue with these people that maybe were unsavory people promoting promoting the SEALs and kind of recruiting that, that type of personality. And so now they're kind of backtracking a little bit and they're trying to play catch up and they're trying to change their image around. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, know, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're in the press and good, bad, or indifferent, the Navy doesn't, the NSW, Naval Special Warfare, is not, not enjoying some of the press that we're getting. Well, that's one thing about like the instant access to social media is right. things that you'd never, ever get out in the press back in the day are now there. And like you said, good, bad, or indifferent. The good yeah. thing I've seen, and you know, I have a lot of friends that, that came out of the Navy and that came out of the military and really jumped into this small business world. 
and kind of, you know what, they found their niche. Now, timepieces, you know, there is so much into it that it's not just like, we're not talking digital timepieces here either. We're talking like really intricate work. How did you get into this? I, I had a buddy, I think as maybe in the first or second grade, gave me a watch for my birthday. And ever since I got that watch, I became obsessed about watches, like 100% about obsessed about watches. I even sold watches in high school, women's watches at Dillard's. I don't even know if Dillard's is still around anymore, but like that's how much I love watches. And I carried that passion with me throughout my entire life. And I, and I, trend, and I transitioned into timepieces because as I was getting out of the military, I, I, was, I was scared. I was really scared. The military was good for me and I loved it. And I, I wouldn't trade my experience in for all the money in the world, but it was time for me to move on. And so I was scared about getting a job again, like I had prior to me joining the military and not thriving and being miserable. And, and you know that you, you've you experienced, you understand that lifestyle in the military. Mm -hmm. And so the, you know, the old advice is, is follow your heart, follow your passion and it's not work and the money will follow. And so that's what I started to do in a roundabout way. I knew this other Navy SEAL who was a time, who was a watchmaker and we started talking and he said, you know, if I could do this, you can do it. And I never really thought about starting my own watch, my watch company. I just wanted to make some watches and maybe sell them for a few dollars here and there on, on the, on the, on the side. But as I started talking to him more and I realized that this is my passion. This is what I need to follow. This is what I should do. And I did it. That, you know, I did it. Like, it's that easy. Like, be like, <laughs> I mean, like seriously. Okay. I'm going to pull up something right here. This is your Got website. It. Give me a second. And we're going to take yeah. a look at the just doing it because this front page picture, I, I love it is because it's like you and I don't know. It looks like you maybe. You know, we're gonna it's me and my you. son. Okay, it's you and your son. Yeah, Look that's at me and my son. Yes, yes. And yeah. that is like real, like in depth. I said it before. This intricate work, uh, and these are like amazing timepieces here. Well, thank and the you. prices, I appreciate that. the prices are good. I don't want to go out and buy some mass produced watch that's going to, you know, it, to fit in everywhere else. Right. I. I really do like this uh the great watch man this thing's all, i love that watch band dude that's incredible. well thank you um yeah so the the good thing about my watches among many other things is i use swiss movement and i don't know if you don't i don't know what your listeners know about watches or what you know about watches but you know swiss movement is kind of is is the standard swiss watches it's the standard mm -hmm. and so i wanted to make a watch using swiss movement that was at an attractive price point. And so that's why I offer my watches at the price I do, because I've always wanted a nice watch with good movement that's reliable. Yeah. But I didn't want to fork out, you know, five grand or whatever for for a Swiss movement type watch. And that's kind of you know, that was, that's kind of, it's an introductory watch piece for people who are interested, who are people who are starting to get into watches and want more than a hundred dollar watch or false or whatever it is. And that's what, and that's what it's all about. I love watches. I want everyone to wear watches. I think they're great. And so that's part of the, that's part of, that's part of the brand, if you will. I, uh, I see myself getting one in the future because the thing <laughs> is I, like, when, but, cause when you throw out like five grand, it's true. I don't have five grand to go and throw on something that, you know, that's, and, and you're not going to be, it's nothing unique. That's the other thing too right. about it. You know, I'm not going to throw any other watch brands out there, but there's nothing unique about it. And like you said, a hundred dollar watch mass produced coming out of like China or somewhere else. It's just I'm not really into it. Right. So, yeah. Uh, I love this concept, man. How's, how's business been? Business is good. Uh, it, we're my fourth year of business. And so every year we're growing right now, I'm going through a brand refresh. It's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. You kind of joked and you just did it. I did just do it in the military and my experience in the SEAL teams gave me that confidence to just do it. You know, how do you climb a mountain one step at a time? And that's just, yeah. that's just what was ingrained. And you know that as much as I know that. And I've gotten to a point where I think 
I've gotten to a point where like, all right, I'm still around. We can still do this. And so now we're going through a brand refresh and we're, we're, I'm, I'm, we're going to up it to the next level is what we're going to do. And we're, we're doing a huge push. We're getting out there more and more people are hearing about us. And I, I, I love it. I love it. What's the, oddly, next, go ahead. what's the next level look like? We want to design another line, a dive watch. Oh. And we want to continue to put out unique timepieces with a good story behind them that right now I don't want to, I, I, I like being a boutique watchmaker that's accessible. It's important mm -hmm. to me that that me, my watch is my business is accessible to other people. And so right now I want to continue to push that effort out, grow, but maintain accessibility. And that's super important to me. I don't know. I don't I, I feel that, you know, things aren't as accessible. Information is accessible, but people and and things are I, I can't call up Rolex and just talk to them and 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 have a conversation with them and to me that's very important because that's that's part of what my watch brand is about you know i've had a bunch of navy seals on eli from bottle breacher i've had the guys yeah. from um what do you call it uh geez bone fried coffee and and yes. stuff like yeah. that on and i love it because they're every product has a story behind it there's always something there and that's what i want i want that for my kids so one day I'm going to die and they're going to look and they're going to see like this watch and they're going to look it up and they'll be like, Oh, you know what? That's pretty cool. They're going to look on my wall and see like 50 bottle breaches and go, dad must have had a really bad drinking problem. But, <laughs> but, you know, but, but you know what I mean? No, it's like, I want history. And I think a lot of people when they buy a watch, a one that's good product and I'm not selling anything. I'm not getting anything free yeah. out of this. I, I want yeah. people to understand that when you buy something that's quality product, it's going to be something just going to be generational. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. And that's, what's important to me. Like I said, I'm super fond of my experience in the military and I wouldn't trade it in for all the money in the world. And it's taught me so much about myself and who I am that I wanted to give that to my children. My, I, I don't really care if my kids join the military or not, but I want to teach them the lessons that I learned in the military and in life for them to succeed, no matter how they def define success in their life. And when you start researching watches and you start getting into it, there are people who will emotionally write about their father's watch or, or, or a piece of jewelry from their mother, what, what have you. Right. And how that piece, that watch or that jewelry becomes their legacy and a, and a reminder of who they were and the things they stood for and all the good times they had. And it's really interesting to me that people get really emotional about this stuff. And, and that's what I want. And I want, I didn't want to just give my kids a watch. I wanted to give them a watch company. And more importantly, I wanted to give them the experience, the lessons, the trials and tribulations that I learned in the team, because you know, the less the things you learn in the military are pretty transferable to writing your own book, having your own podcast, right? It's about picking yourself back up, mm -hmm. having self-awareness and growing. My kids are going to see me do that through this watch company, through running the watch company. And so it's part of the legacy. And that's what I want to do. I love it, brother. And um, before I let you go, I'm going to show everybody the website again here so they could uh, take a look at this. Because uh, this blue watch in the middle, man, just it's killing me. I gotta stop looking at this thing. No, don't stop looking at it. <laughs> I love it. You know, I, well, I love well, let's, that. Let's talk after. And yeah. uh, there's a lot of things that I can do. That watch right there comes with a leather band. I just, mm -hmm. uh, I just got some silicone bands. So it makes that watch a lot more versatile. You can take it in the water. You don't have to worry about the leather. It's a little, it makes it a little bit more sportier. And I just started teening these silicone bands and I absolutely 100% love it. Uh, that is my favorite band too, or that's my favorite watch also. And it's, it's, it's even more now so that I have a silicone band that I can offer people. And it just, it's great. I love it. What's this? So I appreciate the, the kind of words. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. But what's the movements for, for me, who's like not a watch. You have ETA 2824 and Rhonda 515. 
Okay, so ETA or ETA is the company that makes the watch oh, okay. movement, and the twenty eight twenty four is that particular model. Okay, Ronda, the Ronda is, and, and and let me go back real quick. The ETA is a automatic watch. Okay. Meaning you wind it or it gets wound from a, a pendulum inside the watch that you can hear with. So when your hand moves, it kind of, it winds the mainspring in there. You can fully wind that watch. You put it down in your desk, the power and don't wear it for two to three days. The power is going to go down and you're going to have to wind uh, it again. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand now. A automatic movements are, are more prestigious. People like them because it's still a mechanical movement. That that movement right there, the Eta movement, not mm -hmm. much has changed in that movement since the 1900s. Sure, manufacturing processes are better, the materials are better, but by and large, that concept and how that watch works is the same as it worked, or is the same as it was designed in the 1900s. And that and and I love and that's what I love about the watch and that's that particular movement and that's what people. Love about okay. mechanical or automatic movements. The Ronda is a battery operated. That's the brand. Is a battery operated. It's a quartz watch. Okay, it's got a battery in there. So you'll have to change it out every two to three years. You're never going to have to reset it except for daylight savings or when you have to uh, change the date. Hmm. Some people brand. like some people like that. I sold a watch to someone who definitely won the prestige of an automatic watch, but they're like, I got to set, I don't wear it every day. I wear it, you know, yeah. on Thursdays and Fridays, I got to reset. It's not my thing. I said, that's great. That's fine. You buy a watch that's suitable for your lifestyle. So he sent it back. I sent him a battery operated watch, no questions asked, and and everything worked out. It's There's no drama. <laughs> I love it, man. And that's customer service. I like it. Yeah. Well, brother, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, definitely a big fan. And well, thank you. I appreciate it. When's, when, when's the book coming out? <laughs> I'm kidding. Come on, Navy SEALs out there. I'm kidding. I don't know that I will ever write a book, but no one's ever offered me millions of dollars for a book either. So <laughs> maybe when I get maybe that I offer. <laughs> and, I, and, and you know, I heard writing a book is really hard. I heard it's, I heard it's really, really uh, hard. If you're doing it yourself. I'm yeah. like, I'm, I shouldn't say I'm in writer's block right now, but I am just overwhelmed with my next book. And we'll talk about that offline. Um, stay online and, and Brian, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you.